Hey everyone, welcome to Build 2015 to the app monetization and ad promotion, sorry, ad monetization and app promotion session. Uh, we're very excited to be here at Build. Uh, this is the third day of the conference. I hope you had a great time. Uh, we're here to talk about all the great things we're bringing with Windows 10 for you to make more money with ads and to acquire more users with app promotion. My name is Nir Froimovich, and I am a program manager in the Stored Dev Center team. And with me, I have Matt Sullivan from the advertising team and Vijay Rajgopalan from the advertising team as well to talk about features that we've done. So let's go ahead and start with, with talking about why advertising <coughs> matters. When you take a look at the amount of money that we pay you developers in the Windows ecosystem, and this is a metric that you've seen in the analytics session that we've had and the Dev Center session that we had yesterday, a third of that money comes from advertising. So that's a hefty chunk. And so regardless of if you're using um, ad monetization as your primary source of money making, or if you're leveraging other options like IAP or giving a price for your app, this session is really important for you because we've done some great work and great improvements in Microsoft advertising to increase your monetization. Let's take a look at how Microsoft advertising has been faring. And I'm going to use data from the past six months um, to show you year over year revenue for Microsoft advertising. Now, the important thing to notice is the orange bars are almost twice as big as the gray bars. Yes, we have one month that, that is not quite twice, but still higher. And this is indicative of the momentum because you asked us to make more money with Microsoft advertising. And in fact, you are. We are very excited about this momentum. It is indicative of the high fill rates and the high CPMs that we can provide here at Microsoft. And we're hoping to continue this momentum in 2015 and beyond. So let's do a quick overview of the agenda for this session. First, we're going to talk about app promotion. Successful developers acquire users with app promotion, either cross promotions, which we refer to as house ads. Those are ads that show up within your own apps. Or paid promotions. Those are ads for your app that show up in other apps in the ecosystem. And so VJ is going to talk about the great work that his team has done in the app promotion space. Then we're going to move on to the um, Windows 10 Advertising SDK. So I attended GDC 2015 this year in February, and I focused on the monetization track. And analysis after analysis after analysis was showing that even though game developers are making 90% of all the revenue from IAP, adding advertising side by side with IAP doesn't impact your buyers and gives you more money. And so video interstitial is one a very specific, intuitive, and lucrative way of making more ad money in your game. And we've announced it a few times in the past couple of days. I'm announcing it again. Video interstitial is coming to Microsoft Advertising. And Matt is going to talk about that and additional work that we've done in the SDK space for Windows 10. And then finally, ad mediation. So back in November, we released Windows ad mediation for Windows Phone only. Um, some of you may have used it in what we call the legacy portal in Windows Phone. So that's another thing that we notice successful developers do. The fact is that no matter how good an ad provider is, they cannot guarantee 100% fill rate. And so if you want to maximize your fill rate and have the ability to favor your high CPM providers, ad mediation is the solution for you. And we've done some great work with Windows ad mediation to make ad mediation available for all of you. So with that, let's go ahead and start with Promote Your App. So here at Build, last year, we announced the Promote Your App feature in the Pub Center portal. And in the past year, we've got some feedback from you that we addressed, and I'm, we're happy to make some announcements regarding that today. So first of all, you wanted to have better targeting for your ad campaigns. So we're very excited to announce that auto-targeting and additional targeting capabilities are coming to this feature. And Vijay is going to talk about that a little bit later. Next, commonsensical, you want to be able to calculate your cost per install, your CPI. You can only do that if we provide install tracking reporting. We haven't until now, and we're very excited to say that install tracking is coming to App Promotion. And then finally, do you really have to go to Pub Center to create an App Promotion campaign for an app that you've submitted in Dev Center? Not anymore. We're doing a lot of work to unify our experiences such that Dev Center is your one-stop shop, and now App Promotion lives there, even today with Preview. And it's the best cue. With my pleasure to invite Vijay to talk about the great work that they've done on App Promotion. Vijay. Great. Fantastic. Thank you, Nir. It's great to be back at Build. Uh, hope you're all having a fantastic time. 
I'm going to talk about app promotion. Since the launch of app promotion last year, we have added a number of capabilities to help you get new users through acquisition. Particularly, I want to highlight the range of uh, capabilities we've added, starting from better design capabilities through intuitive Visivig tools for you to construct your ad design, custom taglines, new market support, and more importantly, support for promoting Windows 10 apps as well. This exposure product is already available and used by many users, and they are getting really good install tracking as well. Today, I'm happy to announce a bunch of new capabilities that's going to further your user acquisition goals. First, as Neil highlighted, app promotion and monetization are deeply integrated in DevCenter. What it means is, as soon as you publish your app and your app goes live, you can promote your app right within DevCenter. By default, we have enabled you for auto-targeting at no extra cost. We understand the user base of your app. We understand the install base of your app. So we auto-target your campaigns easily to drive more installs for you. However, if you decide to use manual targeting to target specific demography, geography, age, or gender, you could do so using our manual targeting capability. <clears throat> then. We've been working very hard to give you install tracking metrics. Due to the proliferation of legacy ad SDKs, we, have, we are launching this install tracking capability as beta. During the beta period, we are going to work with many external third-party app developers, as well as third-party measurement companies to tune our install tracking to make sure we give you an accurate number. So please, we encourage you to take a look at it and try it out and give your feedback as we improvise this capability. I do want to highlight that it's easy to jump onto app promotion and promote your app without putting your credit card. If you have more than one app in your store, you can cross-promote your app easily in your other app slots uh, using the cross-promotion or the house ads capability. So I encourage you to try it out without using your credit card today to promote your other apps in the Ads and App Network. We are working super hard, working closely with the Windows team to enable many capabilities during the Windows 10 journey. Specifically, we are going to advance the targeting capabilities during the summertime, including support for behavioral targeting, as well as app category-based targeting as well. Currently, this exposure product is only available in English-speaking markets. We are going to make sure this app promotion capability becomes available in other top Windows markets as well, so that you can easily promote your app in other new markets as well. We are working with the Windows 10. Uh, many of you who attended earlier session this morning, you might have understood the campaign attribution tracking capability to attribute your install tracking. So we're going to work closely with the Windows team to enable campaign attribution tracking as well. Finally, as I said earlier, we are working with multiple third-party companies to enable third-party measurement for install tracking. We understand that as app developer, you are already promoting and writing apps in other platforms, and you're used to uh, measurements from other third-party measurement companies as well. So we are working with a couple of companies. We will uh, share more details during the summer time frame. We've been listening to your feedback uh, for a long time. One of your key feedback in, in app promotion was, hey, this barrier for entry for me is putting my credit card. And we've also looked at our logs, and a lot of times people come all the way till saving the campaign, and when they see the uh, credit card option, they drop out. Uh, so I'm super happy to announce that we are going to support publisher earnings. What it means is, if you're already having an ad-enabled application and you're making money, you can set aside some portions of your earnings towards your marketing budget. This is a cool feature that we are excited to land uh, later part of this year. Finally. Over the course of this app promotion journey since last year, we've been working with many big game studios as well. I will share some really good success stories later. We've understood the life cycle of app marketing really well. And one of the uh, scenario that many app development companies are doing is they have pretty good uh, marketing budget when they want to launch a new app. Uh, so there is sort of a burst experience. They wanted to pop and do a major PR when a new app is launched. So they require additional budget requirements as well to run a campaign. So we are increasing the campaign budget from $500 to $10,000 pretty soon. So all these capabilities, you can uh, assume that it will be released throughout the Windows 10 release timeframe during the summer and later in summer as well. 
So to summarize, you can promote your Windows PC, tablet, and mobile apps easily in three easy steps. First thing you need to do is essentially to construct your pop, eye-popping design of your ad. We are giving you a bunch of intuitive tools that you can use to construct your ad design. So we've also enabled custom taglines so that you can get the attention of the consumers. Then set targeting for your app campaign. Whether you leverage the auto-targeting capability that you are automatically opted into, or using the manual targeting, set the right targeting so you can reach the audience that you care about and acquire the new users. Finally, you can measure your campaign effectiveness through the new analytics that we have enabled, and you can understand the various metrics, such as the click-through rate of your ad, how many impressions you've served, and finally, the installs as well. Based on that, you can tweak your campaign, adjust it, and rerun it as well. Let me show you how easy it is. All right, so as we highlighted, I'm right now in the new Dev Center portal. As you can see, app monetization using ads and promoting your apps are deeply integrated in Dev Center. So you can immediately promote your app as soon as your app, app goes live. As you can see here, as part of the app ad campaign, I have a bunch of campaigns already running. These are the paid campaigns. I have paused a few campaigns. The campaigns that are paused or inactive will show up under the inactive section. And you can also cross-promote any of your apps within other apps as well. And uh, all of them will show up under the house campaign section. Uh, we have a pretty good filtering capability if you are looking for, you know, um, if you want to search, you can search this. Let me refresh this. My machine might have timed out. Let me quickly go ahead and search this. All right. While it's loading, um, let me go ahead and search this. So you have a search capability, so as you run many campaigns, you can easily search all the campaigns right within, the, within this portal. Let's go ahead and create a new campaign. Again, this app that I'm writing is essentially a movie gossip app, and it's a brand new app. I don't have uh, any users, so I need to uh, make an eye-popping advertisement and promote this ad in the Ads and App Network. So let's give a friendly campaign name. This, this is a launch, let's call it summer launch campaign. This is again a paid campaign. As I said earlier, you can also run a free house campaign without putting your credit card. When I enable the free house campaign, you can notice that the credit card section completely disappears. So I strongly encourage you to try out the cross promotion if you have more than one app within the Win Windows Dev Center. Let's go ahead and create a paid campaign. Since this uh, movie app is targeted towards users in India, so I'm going to select this country targeting as India. Let's move on to constructing the ad design. As you see here, we provide a few tools for you to construct your ad creatives. These creative elements come from what you have submitted to the Windows Dev Center. So for instance, the logo of your app is here. You can set the background design of your ad creative. This is how this ad will show up in other apps. Um, since this app is free, you can select it's free. This app is brand new. I don't have any rating. I don't want this to be a turn off for users to download, so I'm going to remove the app rating from my ad creative. I'm going to provide uh, some cool custom tagline. So let's call this uh, best movie app. As you notice here, we've also enabled editorial checks so that this uh, app meets the editorial bar in our network. So for instance, if I put cool movie sexy app, it will automatically figure out that I am I'm violating the editorial policies. So this is not allowed in this, so you can be rest assured that only legal, valid, editorially approved content will be allowed here. All right, so this, let's, let me pay, play around with the design. This looks decent for me. Let's mo let me move on to the targeting section. This ad design looks good. Uh, again, I'm going to opt into this auto-targeting because Microsoft really understands the user base of your app. So this is auto-targeted for you. However, if I decide to use a manual targeting, I can target specific gender, age, and also I've already targeted the country here in this particular case. Let's go ahead and set a monthly budget. Let's set it for $100. All right. 
Since I've already used a few credit cards within Microsoft services, such as Azure or Commerce and other places, my credit cards automatically show up here. So here I've used two credit cards. I can pick one of them for this campaign. However, if you decide to use a new credit card, you can add so right here. Let's go ahead and review what we have done here. So it's a new launch of my new app, Summer Campaign. It's a paid campaign. I've set aside $110 for this campaign monthly budget. This is how this ad is going to look. It's a, it's a simple uh, banner ad. Let's go ahead and confirm. So while it's saving this, it's going to take a couple of seconds to uh, save these campaigns. What it does is, under the covers, it's calling our delivery system, passing all these targeting da data. And within a few seconds, your campaign will be ready to start serving in other app install ads. So I will, uh, while it's uh, saving it, I'm going to go back to the install tracking report. You can get to this today from the, uh, uh, from the Dev Center portal using this analytics section. You see these app install ads. This is how you get to uh, the section of the install tracking. This is a first party install tracking. So as you notice here, you can measure your campaign effectiveness using various metrics. For instance, how many impressions, how many, if, if your brand goal, if, if your goal is primarily to create iPop and exposure of your app, then you look at the number of impressions that you've burned so far, how many times users have seen your app. You can look at the correlation between the number of impressions served and the click-through rate of that. The effectiveness of CTR is an important number to measure the uh, campaign effectiveness. Finally, you can track how many installs it led to. This is essentially the first party tracking. You can obviously select as many as four campaigns here. Uh, I have many campaigns running, so I only selected one campaign to demonstrate this. So you can run up to four campaigns and measure the effectiveness and compare them uh, with other campaigns and, and go back and tweak your campaign, uh, such as targeting a different country or leveraging the auto-targeting as well. Or even changing your ad design. Sometimes that, that also is uh, very critical. So let's go ahead and look at this. This is a summer launch campaign. It's still under processing. When I uh, you know, refresh this, it should come back to a completion state. What it means is it's ready for serving right now. So in, a, in the next few minutes, this campaign is ready to start serving. Your promotion will be active. All right, it's, it should load in a second. Let's give it a minute. All right. All right, so this campaign is already active. I can pause this campaign whenever you decide if it's not working out based on the campaign uh, install tracking effectiveness. You can go ahead and pause this campaign. It'll go back to the inactive section. So I hope it gives you a tour of how to promote your app right within Dev Center in three easy steps. Construct your ad design, set auto-targeting, and measure, uh, analyze, and track your install. <clears throat> All right, so we've been working with uh, quite a bit of partners during our early adoption, during the preview phase. I do wanted to highlight a really good, impressive campaign that was run by one of our partners. Is Random Sellers Game here. Uh, I wanted to give them a big round of applause. They've been a great critic for us during this journey. They ran a, a app campaign recently to launch one of their one of the new app that resulted in, in fantastic results for them. So. Again, we are in this journey. We look forward to your feedback. Um, we will be enabling many features during the summertime in the Windows 10 timeframe. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nir. He's going to talk about Ad SDK. Thanks, Vijay. Great work on App Promotion. You should uh, be able to try right now. Yes, a round of applause for App Promotion. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So App Promotion is fully available in Dev Center Preview. You can access the Preview Create Campaigns Consume Performance Reporting, so we encourage you to do that. So with that, let's move and talk about Windows 10 Advertising SDK. So again, touching on things that you've told us in the past 12 months that you want. Well, the first thing, and we kind of like have it in quote form, my <laughs> game needs to run fast. Well, any native app really needs to run fast, and managed ad SDKs are not necessarily the best solution for ad monetization. I'm very excited to announce that our Windows 10 advertising SDK will support native apps. And Matt's going to talk about that um, shortly. Next, every time we release, and for those of you who've been using the Microsoft advertising SDK in the past, every time we release a new version, 
if you wanted to enjoy the goodness that comes with that version, you needed to integrate it into your app, which resulted in an app update. App updates are costly for you, they're painful for users, and so again, very excited to announce that the Windows 10 Ad SDK will be shipped as an OS framework, which means that we can ship um, goodness without you needing to make any code changes, and you just get it for free when the store updates. So that's another good thing. And then, finally, you asked for more ad experiences. And we've uh, announced it several times, and I'm going to do it yet again. Video interstitials, which is a big deal, is coming to Microsoft Advertising. And I'm very excited to invite Matt to the stage to talk about the Windows 10 Ad SDK and also why video interstitials is something that you want to start working with right now. Matt. Thanks a lot, Nir. Uh, I'm happy to announce for the fourth time that we have video, video <laughs> interstitial ads. And there's really three reasons why you would want to use video interstitial ads. Number one, the money, right? Number two, it's a better fit for a lot of games. Uh, and number three, it's super easy to do. So I want to touch on each of those three points. In terms of money, it is actually a product that, that yields, according to eMarketer, 10x what, what the banner ads do. Now, before you start getting all <laughs> greedy, so to speak, uh, you have to bear in mind that Banner ads, you, you're rotating every 60 seconds, and you're not going to do that probably with, with video ads, but you still will have a higher overall revenue. You can, you can count on that. The second thing uh, to touch on is that it is a better fit, especially for games, right? You guys have all seen this before. We have, we have a game where you kind of share both the ad and the gameplay on the same screen. User accidentally clicks the ad. It's a, it's a constant problem. So for user experience reasons, as well as performance, if you're a DirectX game and you're trying to show HTML on the same screen at the same time as DirectX, it's a much better thing to be able to sort of swap out the screens. So for both user experience and for performance reasons, uh, it, it's a good fit. And lastly, it's easy to integrate. And how easy to integrate, I hear you cry. Uh, so easy, a program manager can do it. So let me, with that, show you my game. So I'm going to go switch gears here and head right into Visual Studio. OK. So the first thing that I wanted to point out, maybe I'll even use the pointer. Thank you. <laughs> the first thing that I wanted to point out is that there's no longer such thing up in there as a, any CPU. Since we're a native library, you are going to have to switch to architecture-specific outputs. So in this case, I'm using x86 as my output. The second thing that I wanted to point out and have highlighted already is that it is the very same namespace as the banner ads if you're already using the banner ads. And so that also means it's coming from the same SDK. So you don't have to go download something different. It's going to be right in the same SDK. And then I'll show you what the heart and soul of our API is, which is really four events. Actually, I kind of glossed over. You have to obviously instantiate the control and initialize it. Uh, but then there are four events, and those four events are as follows. The ad ready event is fired uh, at the point in time at between requesting an ad and you're going to show it. So unlike banner ads, where we kind of have a synchronous go fetch it and show it all in one transaction through the refresh call, with video interstitials, you want to prefetch those ads. And you're doing that because you don't want to leave the user hanging while we're going and fetching a video, which is a much a substantially larger asset than our uh, banner ads. So the next two things that you see, oh, I have something on top, sorry. Canceled and completed. Those two can fire off during the, uh, the playback of the ad. So if the user decides to bail out of the ad early, you'll get a, a canceled event. If the user goes and watches the ad all the way through the end, which is what we want, you'll get the completed event. And why do we want the user to watch the whole thing? Well, we're going to get a lot uh, better revenue if we have high completion rates, so we encourage that. And lastly, there's the error occurred event. The error occurred event is exactly the same as in banner ads. And just so you know, very rarely would you ever see those come during ad playback. They're most frequently going to happen during the ad fetch. So with that, and then, oh, I kind of glossed over another call, which is request add. So you request add and show add. Those are the final two things. I happen to wrap them into my own method because I'm calling various add units to, for the sake of this demo. Uh, but you would otherwise just call ivadd.requestAd. Very simple. So with that, let me go ahead and run my program manager game. It is the best game ever. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. 
Okay, it's a throwback. <laughs> and <laughs> so let me say this is maybe the first and only time you're going to see a Microsoft guy up on a stage happy to see a blue screen. So thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, the, the second thing that I wanted to point out, and the reason I, I picked a, an old school primitive game like this is, well, two reasons. One, it's, it was easier to program, honestly. But secondly, it also is to show that it really doesn't matter what that game genre is. We could put video ads into anything. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and accept the value proposition that's been offered to me here. That to, to start level two, I'm going to watch a video. OK, that's cool. I got it for free. I'm all right with this. And up comes an ad. You guys hear OK? Well, I'm getting out of there for two reasons. One, it makes my game look that much more primitive. Uh, two, I've seen it a thousand times. But anyway, it's a gorgeous ad. So you see what happens now is that I've said, you gotta watch the whole thing. So obviously I wired up that canceled event that I showed you before to basically encourage the user, you gotta go watch the whole thing. So, all right, a game, I, again, I, I got it for free, so I'm happy. I'll watch the whole thing. Uh, spoiler alert, this is actually a home video and I enlisted the help of my family uh, to show this ad. Why, son, that's the advertisement disclosure. That tells an app that it's an advertisement, not regular content. <laughs> What's that number? That number? That's the countdown timer, son. The countdown timer tells you how much time is left in the ad. Now that's three. Well, it's a little more than three. This happens to be a very long ad, but most ads will be actually be 15 or 30 seconds. The reason for that is it's very, very expensive to make video ads, and advertisers want to reuse whatever content they can. Daddy, why is there no back button? Oh, well, the reason there isn't a back button is because I haven't clicked on the screen yet. Hey, uh, Self, why don't you go ahead and click on the screen and show them where the back button would be? Button. To learn more button? Okay. Wait, I can't click it. I'm the guy on the TV. You, you, Matt, you click the learn more button. You, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> so the learn more button will only appear in ads that actually have click to web. And in this case, you'll notice that we now created a split screen. In Windows Phone, we'll actually be a full screen in the browser. But you're always just the one back button away. Okay. I don't know. Cheap labor. Uh, I did give him a cookie for the record, okay? <laughs> All right, so I know what you're thinking. Gee, Matt, that's nice. You can put a fake ad in a fake game. Uh, how about a real ad in a real game? And I know they got a shout out before. I'm not even sure if they're here. Is ra Random Salad Guys here? I guess not. Okay, well. Random Salad was the first to put our video interstitials out live, uh, and so I have a little video clip to show you of uh, a game that they created running on 8.1 and live today. And I kept it silent so I could yammer on top of the video. And what you'll notice that they did is that they basically did a pure interstitial. So at the very end of this level, I'm not particularly great at this game, you'll see that it Automatically, we, we come up with an ad. Didn't interrupt the user. The user was all done playing that level. Up comes the ad. This ad doesn't have a learn more link because it doesn't have a click to web action. They don't all have that. But it otherwise looks the same as the Windows one, and you can activate the back button. So exactly the same thing. So that is our first app out in the wild that's using video interstitials through our closed pilot. So congratulations to Random Salad. <laughs> Okay, so next up is, uh, I'm going to go over some of the best practices. I alluded to some of them when I was showing you the demo, but this is more or less a laundry list. I've come to affectionately show, know, uh, know these next slides as the, the nag slide, uh, which is kind of do this, don't do that. So if you'll bear with me. So the best practices is 
you really got to think about these ads during the design phase. Don't think that you're going to just design the game and then kind of come in the end and slap in, <laughs> slap in the ads. You can get away with that with the banner ads, but with the interstitial ads, with the prefetch and all of those events that you're wiring, really figure out where in the workflow it makes sense. And you know, to really show it right, uh, Roger Chin is doing a demo in the theater uh, later today at 2.30, I believe. And you can go see a real, like, DirectX uh, game, and, and he's written it in C++. It's, it's a really cool demo. It's worth seeing. Uh, so natural breaks, it's kind of self-explanatory. You saw where my breaks were. If it's a, a, a sports title, you might have it between innings, right? It's your, it's your game. You'll know where to put those, those ads. Associate with tangible upsides is basically making sure that the user is getting value out of the ads. So, for example, you might have a hint if it's a puzzle game. If it's a puzzle game, give me a hint, I can go uh, finish the game. Or it might be uh, an extra life, or it might be more time to finish the level. Those are, those are examples of good tangible upsides that you give the user. And then uh, you want to continuously improve. Don't think that you're just going like, to release and let it go. You, you really want to look at our reports and make sure that your ads are performing well. And, uh, and you know, re make changes as you need to and resubmit. Uh, and then let's get into the worst practices. And so you, you guys have probably seen some of these. And so some examples. So showing ads at App Start. It seems like that would be a great placement because, well, I'm going to get a lot of money from it, seemingly. But it's a short-term strategy because the first few users who just click a tile, they're going to be confused. They're going to think they launched a media app or something. And they're probably going to rate your app pretty poorly. So I would avoid that interrupting the user. So imagine if I'm clicking all of those bubbles, and you know, lo and behold, suddenly an ad comes up out of nowhere. Uh, that's not a very good placement. Don't do that. Back-to-back -back ads. So just imagine uh, I was getting ready to play level two. I'm all excited. I'm watching the countdown timer go down. It hits zero. Lo and behold, it pops up another ad, and it's 15 or 30 seconds. That's, you can do it. The APIs will allow it. But that's definitely going to have some user backlash you probably want to avoid. And lastly is rewarding with exchangeable currency. So if you're actually giving out real money or, or even anything that's, that can be traded with other users in your app ecosystem, you, you want to avoid that because you're really opening yourselves up to hackers. And hackers tend to win. <laughs> and you have to keep up with them, right? So these are just a sample. So when you go and, and get our bits and get the documentation, make sure you read all of the best practices. I was just giving you a sort of a sampling for the sake of time. So I want to sum it up what you just saw, and a few other goodies. So <laughs> the best practices can be summed up in a single sentence. Make a good game. The money is going to follow, trust me. And then secondly, let's talk about the availability. Uh, I already told you we're out in pilot today. It's in a closed pilot. Uh, we're out there at 8.1 on both phone and on Windows. And Windows 10, you can go download the bits now. And they work with the very same Visual Studio 2015, and, and the OS is, was just shipped for this conference. In fact, that's what I'm running now. And we'll be released ready uh, in association with the Windows 10 launch time frame. Uh, other benefits, Nir already talked about it, and I'll just recap it. We're native. That means we don't load the .NET framework. We're shipping as a framework. That means we don't have a redistributable library. If we, heaven forbid, have a bug and we need to patch that, you don't need to go and resubmit an app package. Uh, we're dependent only upon the universal Windows platforms. That's what this whole conference is about, is the new, uh, you know, the new single runtime that runs across all devices. That's all we depend upon. So that's all your app would need to be, depend upon to take on the, ad, the new SDK. And finally, the cons we consolidate installers with the mediation. So the work that Nier's team is doing uh, is going to be all right in one installer. So one-stop shop, no matter which platform you're targeting. In the past, I know we had our ads and apps site, and we had a whole bunch of rows, and you had to figure out, I'm XAML, and I'm on phone. Did no, this is going to be a single endpoint, very easy to find and install our SDKs. And so universal, we are the universal ad client team. So what does universal mean to me? It means several things. So it means universal by device. Any Windows 10 device, we have you covered. So if it's a tablet, a phone, a desktop, it doesn't matter. We support it. Universal in terms of programming languages. So we support JavaScript. We support C Sharp. We support uh, Visual Basic. Anyone? Is anyone still using Visual Basic? OK. It doesn't matter. We'll support any programming language. And we'll support any app model. So I already talked about and showed you XAML. We also support HTML. And we also support DirectX through uh, XAML DirectX interop. And by the way, this <laughs> last year, uh, probably one of the things I felt most bad about is that we didn't deliver on time 
to have WWA or excuse me HTML apps covered on the 8.1 stack, which and, and we do now. If you are uh, in that uh, in that category, come see me, uh, and we'll be able to set you up with a beta. So, and with that, I'm going to turn it back to Nir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cute kid. Let's see if I can follow that up with some Windows ad mediation for you to get excited about. So we talked about ad promotions. We talked about the new SDK. Let's talk about ad mediation. As I said before, ad mediation is something that successful developers do in order to maximize their fill rates and to favor their high CPM providers. However, mediation is very complicated and costly. You need to find the right assemblies. You need to read multiple documentations. You need to implement multiple codes for different providers, and that's before you even started with your mediation configuration. And even then, one mediation configuration is likely not going to work for you very well if your app is successful in more than one market, because different ad providers are performing differently in different geographies. So like I said, back in November of 2014, we released Windows Ad Mediation for Phone, and we're very excited to say that as soon as Dev Center exits preview, and you can start submitting apps in Dev Center, um, you will be able to take advantage of Windows Ad Mediation for all your apps. And it addresses all these pain points. Another one that I wanted to call out separately is that if you do implement your own mediation, every time you make changes to that mediation configuration, and you will have to make multiple changes to that because it's a dynamic configuration between different providers, well, it results in a code change that requires you to build your app and send an update, which, as we said before, is costly for you and it's painful for your users. If you set up your own service to do that, it is also extremely expensive, and Windows Ad Mediation does that for you. You can go to Dev Center and you can create configurations for specific markets and change them as many times as you want, and they will be consumed by applications um, that without, need, without the need of an app update. And then finally, we touched on that before, is do I really need to go to PubCenter in order to monetize with ads the app that I've submitted in DevCenter? Well, the answer is no. Again, very excited to um, have created uh, a red carpet, white glove, more expletives, for, to make it easy for you to use Microsoft Advertising for your ad monetization. And with that, let's go ahead and jump to a demo to show you exactly how that looks. All right, so I went ahead and created this um, Windows application in Visual Studio 2015. And the first thing that I'm going to do is you'll note that here at the toolbox, I have an ad mediator control. That would be the new ad control. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag ad controls to the designer, to the location where I want to show ads. So I'm going to put one at the top left and one at the bottom right. Now I'm going to give them meaningful names. The reason I'm going to do that is when I upload this package in Dev Center, I will need to configure the metadata for the participating ad networks. And so it helps that the control is identifiable for you in Dev Center. So I'm going to call this one top left, and I'm going to call this one bottom right. Now, I talked about red carpets and white gloves. What did I mean? For those of you who have monetized with PubCenter in the past, you know that you needed to create an account with PubCenter, provide a payout PI, create a tax profile, generate app IDs and add unit IDs, copy paste them into your code that you've implemented specifically for Microsoft Advertising before you could build and upload in Dev Center. By dragging the control from the toolbox to the designer, we've implemented everything for you. If you want to monetize with Microsoft Advertising, you're done. Once you've dragged those controls, you can build your app and you can submit into Dev Center. However, before we do that, we also mentioned that successful developers use ad mediation in order to maximize fill rates and favor high CPM providers. And so I highly recommend that you take advantage of the ad mediation feature that is built into this ad control. Now, in order to do that, from the project menu, you can go ahead and add a new connected service. And you will note that ad mediator is one of those connected services available for you. So the first thing you'll see is that Microsoft Advertising, by default, is already part of our project, and we, we knew that. Let's go ahead and select additional ad networks. I'm going to choose Ad Duplex and Smato in this case. Now, as I click OK, VS goes to Nougat to grab the right assemblies for this project type from Ad Duplex and Smato. 
we've worked with those companies to go ahead and get their assemblies to Nuget and for us to make the decision on which assemblies to grab. So you no longer need to find those. You no longer need to deal with adding the references. Once I hit OK, I can see the three participating ad networks. Now, before we exit connected services, I do want to call out the configure option that is available for each one of the providers. So let's highlight add duplex and hit configure. This is an optional step where you can enter the metadata that you've retrieved from the ad duplex portal. The reason you would use it here is if you want to sideload your app or if you want to TS to a local machine in the case of a Windows app and you want to test that that metadata that you retrieved shows live ads, you would use it here. This is an optional step, and so I'm not going to do that. And we're just going to go ahead and add. And of course, the background goes away, which is easily fixable by loading main page again. And we're ready to go. All we need to do now is build our app and upload it into Dev Center. Now, before we move to Dev Center and see the experience there, I do want to call out that we've implemented a bunch of events on these ad controls that you can register to encode and either print to console or to your own logs for testing purposes. We have extensive documentation on all the um, event registration and practices that we recommend you do in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and move to Dev Center. Now, I already created um, an app in the, the preview Dev Center called uh, Build 2015 for the Win. And I've created a submission. And for demo purposes, I already went ahead and uploaded an identical package to the one that we just created in Visual Studio. Now, the first thing that you'll note is that there's a configure ad mediation link in the details section for that package. So let's go ahead and click that. It's going to take us to the monetize with ads page for that app which is also available from the left nav menu under the monetization parent in the context of that app. So let's take a look at this screen. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose the package that we're configuring. Since there are multiple app providers, ad providers that work for multiple app types, we're going to configure on a package by package basis. So let's go ahead and continue uh, configuring the package that we just uploaded. <laughs> All right, next is the target. Baseline here is to distinguish from a market-specific configuration. If you don't create a market-specific configuration, baseline is going to be used everywhere. And I'm going to show you a little bit later how to create a market-specific configuration and where it makes sense. Then you're going to enter your global refresh rate that's going to work across all the participating providers. And now we're at the mediation configuration UI. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing that you will note is that Microsoft Advertising is by default getting 100% of the distribution. And also that we added a logical provider for Microsoft Advertising House Ads that is by default set up to backup. Now, VJ talked about ad promotions and cross promotions with house campaigns. If you create house campaigns, you can then configure them and mediate them with other ad providers that are participating in your package. So we're going to get to that shortly. Next, you'll also notice that Ad Duplex and Smato are both set to an active by default. Now, the reason for that is there's actually required metadata for both these providers that you need to enter in Dev Center before we can start showing ads with those providers. That's metadata that you've retrieved from their portals. So in this case, I went ahead and entered it. I will call out, though, when we talked about connected services in Visual Studio, if you remember that optional uh, feature to configure your uh, providers for testing purposes, if you took advantage of that, we are going to pre-populate it for you in Dev Center so that you don't have to do it again. However, Dev Center is the source of truth. And we would still require that you review this metadata and hit an explicit save. So let's go ahead and collapse these two, since we have the metadata, and let's configure them. So I'm going to choose Ad Duplex to be a backup provider. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give Smato 30% of the distribution. Now you will note that Microsoft Advertising by default decreased to 70% because the sum of the distribution must always equal 100. Now let's explain what it means that Microsoft is at 70% and Smato is at 30. Every time the ad control is ready to request an ad, we roll the dice. We call that a mediation session. Now 70% of the time, in this case, we're going to request an ad from Microsoft Advertising. And 30% of the time, we're going to request an ad from Smato. If one doesn't have an ad, we're going to try the other. If both don't have an ad, we're going to try one of our backup providers. So let's go ahead and save this baseline configuration. And while it's saving, and by the way, I will just point out, no need to enter any metadata for Microsoft Advertising. It's all done for you already. So while this, while this finished saving, let's talk about a market-specific scenario. So let's assume that I, 
I just released a game in the Argentinian market just for my Argentinian customers, and that I have multiple apps and games in the Argentinian market. So let's go ahead and create an Argentina-specific configuration. So from the target, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose Argentina. And then you will note that first, it inherits from the baseline. So that's your starting point. Now, I've created a house campaign for this new game in Argentina. And I would actually like to make an investment and use 10% of my supply to show this cross-promotional campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change house ads. I'm going to take it all the way to 10%. And I'm going to go ahead and lock it so that I can configure the other providers without impacting that number. Now let's assume that Smato is faring horribly in Argentina. And we never want to call it in Argentina, not even as a backup. We can go ahead and we can slide Smato all the way to inactive. The assemblies for Smato are still going to be part of the package that is in the catalog. But devices in Argentina are never going to call Smato, not even as a backup. Now let's assume the opposite. Let's assume that Smato is exceptionally well in Argentina. And in fact, we want it to be the dominant ad provider there. We can go ahead and move Smato. Let's move it all the way to 80%. Boom. Microsoft advertising reduced to 10%. We keep our 10% investment in our house campaign. This looks good. Let's go ahead and save this market-specific configuration. And so the last piece is how do devices in Argentina are actually going to start behaving according to this mediation? So we stood up a service that allows all the devices out there in the world to call home every 24 hours and consume a new configuration if available. So in this case, since we just created the Argentina configuration, all the devices running my app in Argentina are going to start consuming this configuration and acting by it. And so to finish off the Windows Ad Mediation section, let's go and take a look at reporting. So since I wanted to use an app that actually has um, a lot of traffic and a lot of users and has been using successfully the Ad Mediator, we chose a, a, an internal um, successful developer's app called Salter HD. And let's take a look at the Ad Mediation reports that are available under the Analytics heading in the context of your app. And I'm going to go over those fairly quickly. They're well documented, and we can continue talking about them also after the session. So the first report is just your general ad mediation performance report. It shows your um, fill rate, the number of mediation sessions, and then the number of ads delivered. Now let's go back to the fill rate. You'll note that in this case, the average fill rate is 100%. I do want to call out that the charts here use as a min value the min value for the data available. And in fact, the min value here is 99.54. So this developer is achieving a near 100% fill rate, in fact, mathematically rounded to 100% fill rate, using Windows Ad Mediation. Now, this developer is using all these ad providers, five ad providers, and we provide you also with the fill rate for each one of those. And this is a straightforward fill rate calculation, which is basically ads delivered divided by requests. Finally, there's a unique users per mediation configuration. So if you recall, we created a, a specific configuration for Argentina. But let's take a more um, a simpler example. You have a configuration. You've looked at the CPMs across all your providers. And now you want to make a change to favor uh, a provider that now is the high CPM provider. You go to the configuration. You make the changes. Well, you want to know at which point do you have a critical mass of devices and users who have consumed this configuration before you make decisions whether to keep that configuration or to make edits to it. And in this chart, you'll be able to see, in this example, we see that there's a, there's a very dominant configuration that applies to the majority of users. And then finally, we provide you two error breakdowns. The first one just gives you the um, error rate for each ad provider. And it's a, it's a straightforward, what percent, percentage of all ad requests resulted in an error instead of a valid response? Now, I want to point out that a valid response would be either an ad or no ad, right? Not having demand is not an error case. But then let's say that, for example, here in Interactive, we see a 16% error rate. If you want to know what's causing those errors, we provide an additional error breakdown by type. And this is a new um, report that we have that, we, that doesn't exist in the Windows Phone portal right now. And so in the case of Interactive, we can see that there's two error types that are contributing to all their errors. And 83% of all the errors are related to this one. And so in our documentation, we provide explanation on each one of those error types and the right strategies to address them and reduce them. So with that, let's go back to the presentation. All right. 
So currently, side by side with Microsoft, we have seven mediation partners that are already partici participating with Windows Ad Mediation, and more are coming in the pipeline. Um, if you're using it for Windows Phone, you'll be able to consume your reports in the Preview Dev Center. However, you will not be able to make configuration changes to configurations done in the Windows Phone portal. Bear with us for a few more weeks, and once the, the Preview Dev Center opens up, you'll be open for business with Windows Ad Mediation, and we're very excited to see um, how you like it. All right, so let's summarize what we talked about today. We started out with talking about app promotion, and we talked about how we added auto-targeting and additional manual targeting capabilities, and also we're going to start reporting on installs so you can calculate CPI. Then we moved on to talk about the Windows 10 Ad SDK, how it supports native apps, how it's going to be shipped as an OS framework so that you don't have to update your app whenever we update our SDK, and how interstitial ads for the fifth time <laughs> is announced now for Microsoft Advertising. It is actually a big deal. You have an opportunity to make a lot more money in your apps and games. And then finally, we talked about ad mediation and how Windows ad mediation makes it very easy for you to plug and play third-party ad providers, getting a, a high fill rate and favoring your high CPM providers. And then finally, kind of like the, the, the one meta Uber point is, no more will you have to go to multiple portals. Dev Center is truly your one-stop shop for app development and ad monetization and app promotion. And so we're very excited about that, and hopefully so are you. Thank you. All right, so a little bit of call to action. Well, first of all, like I said, Promote Your App is available in Preview Dev Center. So go and use it. And until Preview Dev Center becomes the only Dev Center available, Pub Center is going to continue being alive. And so go ahead and start comparing. Create campaigns in Pub Center. See them show up in the Preview Dev Center. Compare the reports. Do it in the other direction. Create campaigns in the Preview Dev Center. See them appear in Pub Center. And one thing that I actually didn't mention, and I'm not going to switch back now to Dev Center, but at the bottom of every Dev Center page, we have a feedback charm. Please, please use that feedback charm and let us know what you like and what you don't like. We review that feedback on a daily basis, and we, are, we make decisions on design changes and UX changes based on what we hear from you. All right, the next call to action is download and integrate the preview for the Windows 10 Ad SDK. In the learn more uh, link here in the Microsoft Advertising build blog, you will find the instructions on how to do that. And so start playing with the interstitial ads. Start playing with um, a native implementation for your ad solution from Microsoft Advertising. Second, and this is something that, or third rather, something that Matt uh, mentioned at 2.30 um, in about an hour and 10 minutes, you're going to have the last chance to see the theater demo um, at the demo theater. <laughs> Roger. It's right, it's right next to Quick Start. There you go, right next to Quick Start. Is that on second floor? Second floor. Second floor. I think it's right across from the restroom. You're not going to miss that. <laughs> um, uh, so DirectX with video ads, come see uh, um, the last chance to see that demo. And then something that I already mentioned, give us feedback. Give us feedback in person, give us feedback in email, give us feedback in the feedback charm in Dev Center. And we're going to be in the Insider Lounge for kind of like the next hour to 90 minutes. So any of you here in the hall who want to have a, a conversation um, can definitely come over and ask, and we're happy to help. And I think that we have about seven minutes left for Q&A right here. So actually, before we, as you line up uh, for Q&A, I do want to point out that we want to make Build a better conference for you. And the only way we can do that is if we hear from you on each session. Did you get enough details? Did you not get enough details? Did you like the presenters? What about Matt's kid? I think that <laughs> deserves an evaluation. So please scan the QR code, enter to win a prize, and let us have a better Build for you next year. And with that, let's do Q&A, if there are any questions. A question about, uh, about house ads. Um, is there going to be any custom designs or only predefined? Or is there also going to be any interstitial house video ads available? Mm. Uh, great question. Uh, mm. So the house ad creatives that we support is very limited today. We are going to expand more creative solutions later. 
uh, whatever is available today I showed you is, is the only creative options available to construct your things. Um, interstitial, certainly uh, now that we have uh, enabled through the Add SDK, we will also support that to construct the, um, you know, your design as well. So it's not a tin plan, but uh, certainly we will look into it. You're going to make some home videos? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. Hey. Anyone start <coughs> interstitials to mediation? Like mediation for interstitials? So off the, out of the gate, we're not going to support mediation for interstitial. Um, I do want to point out that when you drag that ad control onto the designer, all the references required in order to implement interstitial in your project have already been taken care of. Um, we are thinking about mediation for interstitial. Right now, the only provider that works on the Windows ecosystem is Microsoft Advertising. And and I you guys, play. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's actually talk about that. We're definitely thinking of mediation for interstitial, but out of the gate, we're not going to have mediation for interstitial. Okay. One more question about uh, install tracking. Will you do integrations with uh, third parties you know, to, to, to send this information back to, to them? So like, most of the install tracking companies, they, what they do, they provide special URLs for each partner network that, and the information is posted back to the network. So, for example, if you like, advertise with us and use uh, install tracking from some third party, they will send the information back to us that you know, our campaign resulted in, in, in an install. Will there be something like this with so uh, this, so obviously, currently, we are not exposing that data. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are also moving into the campaign attribution tracking that Windows 10 provides. Mm -hmm. um, I would uh, Right, so with the first party campaign attribution that we're releasing with Windows 10, we're making it easy for you to seed the URL that will direct to the, to the page view in the store. And then if there's a conversion, the attribution in that conversion is stored as part of the, um, what we call the entitlement. Well, what that really means for you is that when the app runs, it will have programmatic access to that attribution. A lot of the way that these third party um, Im implementations work is that they give you a piece of SDK that at app launch will go and grab the attribution somehow um, and then send it to that third party so that they can match the click event with the conversion. And so we are absolutely enabling that with the first party um, attribution solution from Windows 10. And we are also collaborating closely with, with the advertising team for them to onboard that solution. Um, the details haven't been figured out yet, but, but absolutely we're aware that this is a top requirement for the um, campaign attribution feature, and we're fully committed to making that feature um, fully baked. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you have an example of a game or app that could have made a lot more money if they would have used the advertisement in a better way? As you probably so studied this a lot. The short answer is yes. Um, however, we we are limited in what disclosure we can do in forums like that. So how about you um, come to the Insider Lounge and we can have some, um, some more you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations. But could you say what they did wrong without specifying the, the app or something? So I, I may have misunderstood the question. Did wrong in, in what regard? In how they use app uh, advertising and such to make money. So I wouldn't say that, that there's examples of how people used um, advertising offering wrong. I think that there are capabilities. Are, are you referring to the, to the interstitials in particular? Or, uh, or? No, yes, okay. generally how to mm. make money with advertisement in okay. the apps okay. or games. So you know, I, I would say that this really um, touches on the meta point that we were making in this session, right? Okay. If you're not using ad mediation, you are leaving money on the ground. If you're not using interstitial ads in addition to banner ads, you are leaving money on the ground. If you're not acquiring more users with our app promotion, cross promotion feature, you are missing out on users that would otherwise engage with your app and increase your um, supply, which will then result in more money for you, especially with ad mediation, and so the cycle continues. Okay. And so I wouldn't say that there's um, 
our wrong approach. I mean, you could, you could definitely implement it in a way that you know, in code won't, wouldn't work. But um, I think that what developers need to remember is that we have a lot more opportunity in Windows 10 to increase your, um, your dollars from advertising, either through user acquisition or through our mediation and uh, additional ad experiences solutions. OK, thank you. Um, so for the ad mediation, um, what can we expect for some of the providers that I think they mainly target mobile um, now with universal Windows apps? Um, if we set up ad mediation, you know, are, we, are they just not going to fill those, or how does that kind of work? So you know, what I can say about this, and, and we should continue more in person, is we are working aggressively with many partners um, to onboard them onto the Windows ecosystem support from, from an app provider perspective. We're also thinking about um, how we can architect ad mediation in such a way that would enable uh, multiple ad providers to come uh, very easily to the Windows ecosystem. Uh, and so we, in fact, you know, I can't provide any details right now, but we expect a, a, a significant surge in the number of mediation partners following that re-architecture. Uh, but that's kind of like a, it's more like a strategy future um, um, kind of like facing thinking. But we're we're engaged in that thinking right now. All right. <clears throat> All right. We're just on time again. Thank you very much, and um, maybe see you at the Insider Lounge. Thank you. <laughs>